Okay, Hacksters, part two of our 2018 wrap-up series. Uh, we're going to look at some AI and smart assistant projects. First up, we have um, someone who's been on our channel a few times at this point. Peter Ma has won a bunch of contests with this clean water AI project. It's a very useful project uh, beyond being technologically impressive and having a great tutorial. So it's designed to help people find contaminated water so that they can fix it in places where it might otherwise be unfeasible. One of the key merits of this project compared to traditional filters and other tests is that when a new strain of contaminant is discovered, you don't necessarily have to print a bunch of new test strips, ship materials out all over the world in order for people to be able to use that information. If you have the system in place, you'd simply be able to update people's software so that they have a model of what this looks like and how an AI system can detect it and instantly be able to ensure that they have clean water for everyone. This project uses the Intel Movidius Neural Compute Stick and we had Peter in the studio to talk about that at the end of the year. Another cool project, the Dialectic Ball, is a physical debugging tool for your code. It's basically a magic 8-ball crossed with a rubber ducky. If you don't quite get that, uh, you might be interested to learn about rubber duck debugging, which is basically a technique where you are having a problem engineering something and you decide to talk to the little rubber ducky on your desk in order to sort of walk yourself through the problem. And by simply talking through it, often you'll be able to figure out where you've gone wrong or something that you're overlooking and have this sort of aha moment that clears things up for you. It also happens to be why I designed this little Alex Glow <laughs> rubber ducky uh, so that I could talk to myself while talking to myself. Uh, for everyone else, there's a magic eight ball or magic debugging ball. It does say magic eight ball on there. Um, basically you ask your question, give it a shake, and then it suggests some kind of debugging technique that you could use to fix your problem. So in this case, for example, it is, have you tried step-by-step -step execution? So running through your process one step at a time and seeing where the process fails. I love this update to the standard Magic 8 Ball and the author's own collection of little rubber duckies. Very solid. This thing actually runs on at Tiny84, which is kind of incredible. Uh, and also an LCD screen like the ones used in the old Nokia phones. So this seems like it would be pretty robust, just in case you don't end up solving your problem. If you choose to give it a hurl across the room, maybe it would survive. Lots of cool info in this tutorial, as well as, of course, the 3D printed parts and the code. Next up from Matrix Labs, the makers of the Matrix Creator and the Matrix Voice devices that make it really easy to build your own voice assistant on any number of platforms, including Alexa, Google Assistant, Snips.ai, Mycroft, and more. Uh, they created this Iron Man arc reactor suit. Basically, you would say, Jarvis, turn on the reactor, and Jarvis, turn off the reactor, and the set of integrated LEDs in this ring around it would basically respond to your voice. So this is designed as a sort of home automation system that's kind of all-in-one. It's got accelerometers and whatnot that you can use to create a really all-in-one integrated system without buying a bunch of parts and having to put everything together before you can get started with coding. Very cool. Next up, Wise Chameleon is another very versatile project that's designed to help you automate your home with any number of different actuators. So there's two demoed in this project. There's a rotary control, and then there's a linear control, both of which run off of an Arduino Maker 1000 Wi-Fi connected Arduino board uh, using the Amazon Alexa Skills Kit. Uh, and they've designed these parts in Autodesk Fusion 360. IoT for the win, they say. Indeed. The way they put it is modular actuators. So uh, what they wanted this thing to be capable of is things like running a motor or servo, uh, Wi-Fi communication with Alexa or Google or Smart Hub, power management for handling battery or solar or DC power, and then yeah, doing that using use case defined attachments. Tons of stuff to learn from here. And of course as well, I love the color that they picked for the 3D printing. Very cool. Here's another really cool one that could help people create a better world. So this is designed to help people not only identify plants in a farm, 
that have diseases, but also to easily be able to mark them. So it says traditionally humans have to manually inspect large farms using their phones to mark the crops in most high-tech cases. This takes a lot of time and effort, and so they're looking to automate this process. Additionally, there are a variety of phones being used that don't necessarily have all the features required to do the task efficiently or they have to wait for someone with the proper device. So this is basically a way of ensuring that the technology that's needed is present, it's all in one, and you also reduce the need for human labor, making it more efficient to grow crops at scale without losing a large percentage to disease. So it's got an integrated plant disease marker for which they did an, a fair amount of research into some kind of marking system that wouldn't harm the plant itself, as well as a movable camera uh, and things like that. One really cool thing about this, one neat thing, of, another neat thing about this is that they tried to build it uh, at extremely low cost. So they got this carbon fiber rod from a garage sale. The top light that indicates whether it's on or moving or whatever is actually built from a pill bottle. And obviously, eventually, if they want to mass produce this, they would be making it at scale with standardized components. But in the meantime, you should be able to basically build your own out of whatever. There are some 3D printed parts, and uh, another cool part of this tutorial talks about their process of iteration on the wheels, which initially on the farms where they tested it, yes, they did, on location testing, um, initially the wheels that they used would dig trenches in the sandy soil that these plants favored. Uh, and so they've revised that in order to make a more plant-friendly and robust platform for it to travel around on. Very cool. Besides that, there's even more of a public education aspect of this. They said, we also made it a point during the project to take Farm Aid out to public events whenever asked to do so. Sort of growing out with these other agricultural robots, including MoBot and some high power bots. Synergy for future builds and collaboration. So it, it just seems like a really great team with an initiative that will benefit everyone. And finally, we have a really beautiful project. So this looks to me like a rendering, but it's not. It's just a really gorgeous IoT project, and oh, we see so many projects that are really cool, but still kind of look like a box of wires, and there's nothing wrong with that, but like this one just takes it to the next level, um, using a braided cord cover and like this custom cover for the lamp. They've hacked up this IKEA lamp and they teach you how to do it. This project actually took forever for my computer to load because it uh, has a bunch of really detailed GIFs. Yes, I said GIFs showing you, <laughs> don't at me, showing you how to perform the hacks that they did. It's just really, oh, look at the depth of field. Ugh. It's unfairly pretty. So again, yeah, you just grab an Ikea lamp, throw in a Raspberry Pi, an Adafruit accelerometer, a camera, and a little smart projector. And then you use Google Android things to communicate with this thing and it basically makes your environment come alive. So they've included at the top of here some demonstrations of their system, which is that not only is it a single project that you can build, but also it's part of an ecosystem where people can build and share these software channels, essentially functions that your lamp can provide. So for example, this augmented clock channel, uh, where you can see your appointments overlaid around a real world clock. Or this other one uh, that's a sort of now playing, basically a little, um, what do you call it? Ticker tape, ticker, scroller thingamajig. <laughs> like at the bottom of the news, but for your house to see like what's playing on your speakers right now, for example. This is one that I think would actually be really great for game nights. Like just imagine having like a little D&D &D board on your table where you can see the things moving around in real time. Like just imagine that. And on that note, stay tuned for our next one where we're gonna have a series of game night themed hacks that should add an extra sparkle to any night in.